let's take a look at question five. It says, solve the following differential equation, the second derivative of five minus five prime is equal to zero. It says, find the solution around this point. So first check to see if it's an ordinary point or it's a singular point. X equal to zero is going to be an ordinary point. So it means that the power series solution has the general form y equals to sum cn x to power n and start from zero to infinity. So this is the general solution. It means that y is equal to c sub zero plus c sub one x plus c two x squared c three x cubed plus the rest of the terms. Our job is to identify what's the behavior of these coefficients. So let's take the first derivative. We need the first derivative, then we need the second derivative. The first derivative is zero plus c1 plus two c2x plus t three c3 x squared plus the rest of the terms. So y prime is nothing but the sum cn n x to the power n minus one and start from one to infinity. Now let us take the second derivative. The second derivative becomes zero plus zero plus to x to c2, x becomes the power zero. So this is two c2 plus six c3 x plus the rest of the terms. Or the second derivative can be written as the sum cn n n minus one x to the power n minus two and start from two to infinity. Let us substitute this into the differential equation and see what do we get. This becomes the sum cn n, n minus one, x to n minus two, and start from two to infinity, minus, minus y prime, y prime is the sum, cn, n, x to power n minus one, and start from one to infinity equal to zero. Now, since you have different indices, different exponents, first you have to make some shifts. Otherwise, you cannot combine these two series. So let us do the shift. Let's, for example, define k to be n minus two, and k for the second uh, series be equal to n minus one. So it means that we are shifting by subtracting two from the index and adding two to each n into the general definition of the series. So this guy becomes the sum, k starts from zero to infinity. Well, here you have c2, n becomes k plus two, k plus two, and k plus two, and here you have k plus two minus one, or k plus one, and x to power k minus, for the second series, n is k plus one, so here you get n equals to zero to infinity, c to k plus one, times k plus one, x raised to, here you have k, and here you have k starts from zero. So it's equal to zero. Now the index and the exponents are the same. You are allowed to combine these two series. This becomes one series, k starts from zero to infinity, ck plus two times k plus two times k plus one minus ck plus one times k plus one and all multiplied by x to the power k equal to zero. This power series is equal to zero if and only if the coefficient is equal to zero. So you get ck plus two times k plus two times k plus one minus ck plus one times k plus one equal to zero. Or these two are equal to each other or ck plus two is equal to ck plus one divided by can cancel out k plus one and k plus one. So this becomes k plus two. And note that k cannot be equal to negative one. Very good. So you have a formula for these CIs. It means that we need to be able to figure out a relation between CI values. So let me erase this part of the board. We need to see how we can figure this out. Let's plug in different values for k. k is equal to zero. It means that c sub two is equal to c sub one divided by two, okay? And if k is equal to one, we get 
c sub three equals to c sub two divided by, well, here you have three, but c sub two is c one divided by two. So it becomes c one divided by two times three. Now, if k is equal to two, c sub four becomes c sub three divided by, here you have four, but c sub three is equal to c sub one divided by two times three times four. We'll continue this process. Well, c sub zero is going to be c sub zero and c sub one are c sub one. We don't know what they are, but we know that the rest of these coefficients are multiples of c sub ones. They are dependent on c sub one. So let's take a look at this. Our y is equal to c sub zero plus c sub one x plus c sub two is c sub one divided by two x squared plus c sub three, which is c sub one divided by two times three x cubed plus the rest of the terms. So it seems like that we have the following relation. Our y becomes c sub zero. If I factor out c sub one, I get this relation x plus x squared divided by two factorial plus x, x to the third divided by three factorial plus the rest of the terms. Well, this is very similar to the e to the x. Recall, we have to remember some of the general definitions. The power series representation for e to the x is one plus x divided by one factorial plus x squared divided by two factorial plus the rest of the terms. What is missing? One is missing. It is equal to e to the x minus one, which is x over one factorial plus x squared over two factorial plus the rest of the term. So y is equal to c sub zero plus c sub one times negative one plus c sub one e to the x. Well, so our y can be written as these two, c sub zero minus one is a constant, which is our first solution plus c sub one e to the x, which is our second solution. So here you have y one, we can write it as just y one to be zero. Let me just distinguish between these. We're going to keep c one. So this guy becomes c sub zero plus c sub one times e to the x minus 